You've heard of, you have a problem, you suggest a solution, you make some observations, you go and run a test. What do we call that? Method. Method, so scientific method, 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 right? But yet it's just a section in his whole book on how to improve education. So there is a, there's a distinct connection between the invention of the method on how to organise knowledge and what we call education. Okay, now having said that, the two things that he wrote in his introduction in 1605 in this education text is there are two books laid before us to stop us falling into error. The first is the Holy Scriptures, which reveals the will of God, and the second is the creation, which declares his power. So there's the connection. Science is creation-based. Education is science-based. So education is creation-based. So there's, there's the real connection. That's why when you get to philosophers like Descartes, right? Descartes is used as the idol of many skeptics. Usually they haven't read Descartes because Descartes basically says, here's the box that God has told us. Inside that box, we can have doubts. But that box is God's revealed thing, so we can't have doubts about the box, right? Because God is greater than our wisdom. Now, that's the limits of knowledge, the limits of empirical knowledge. And if you don't teach where that, that knowledge of empiricism came from and the limitations of that method, then you'll make the same error Charles Lyell did. And in not only getting rid of Moses, the long-term results, well, look, one step further on, Charles Darwin read Charles Lyell. Now, up until Charles Lyell's book, nobody would have accepted evolution because they couldn't believe the world was exceedingly old. Once Charles Lyell opens that door, Charles Darwin steps through. Then along comes Karl Marx and recognizes, ah, Darwin's work gives me a moral authority to come up with the philosophy of communism. Along comes Stalin and away it goes, right? And you can now see the long-term fruits of Charles Lyell. He's gotten rid of Moses. In the end, you get rid of the Ten Commandments out of America. You get rid of Christianity out of Europe. It's as simple as that. Yes, so there are radical implications for you and your children. Unthinkable. I can remember how many today skilled Jewish scientists are taking up and, you know, perpetrating this evolutionist thinking when one of the direct products of evolution was the concentration camps. Am I right? Hitler was definitely into you know, exterminating Jewish people, exterminating other millions of people as a product of what an evolutionist scientist taught all over Germany. This uh, German scientist was called the Bulldogs of Darwin in Germany. Don't they think that? It's well, you'll find that uh, Darwin's, one of Darwin's relatives came up with a book on eugenics. You know, the, well, well think of Dar the title of Darwin's book. Most people think of the origin of the, ra uh, origin of the species, right? But underneath it, in big type in the original, is the survival of favoured races in the struggle for life. The favoured races? Favoured races in the struggle for life. So implicit in Charles Darwin's book is that some of us are better than others and we will be selected to survive. The next step on, go to Hitler. I will make sure we are the survivors. Mm. So we'll get rid of the blacks, we'll get rid of the Jews. Mm. Go one step further. It is true that many Jewish scientists have adopted it. Can you think of the most famous Jewish ethnic background scientist who... Uh, Stephen Jay Gould. No, no, and he's, he's currently the one, but I mean the one even more famous from him. How about Albert Einstein? Oh, yeah. Okay, quote, unquote, when I was 12 years of age, I picked up Darwin's book on the origin of species and never opened my Bible again. Okay, that's the nature of what Einstein did. From then on, even though he had a sort of concept of God, it ceased being the God of the Old yes. Testament, right? Yes. Yes. And it was just a God that he invented. And once you start inventing God, you can make whatever rules you like. So we shouldn't be surprised if you go to Israel, they have one of the highest abortion rates in the world because they no longer believe that man is made in God's image. We've been talking about frogs in the fossil record. Uh, tell us a couple of things of big mosquitoes in the fossil record. Thank God they're not here anymore. No spray, good for them. Mm -hmm. Big cockroaches. Uh, then degenerated midgets, as you call them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that world was some better than it is well, today. You, you remember when I took you to Tennessee, yeah. yep. we saw some trees yes. standing in the rocks. Yep. Now, you and I perceive them as trees because they're so large. Yes. But in reality, it can be proved they are the ancestors of our present day tassel ferns, which are this big, right? So all the big ones are gone. Um, when you look, we only hear about the big lizards, the dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> but the same big dinosaurs used to catch big dragonflies. Yeah. Dinosaurs are gone, dragonflies are still here. Yeah. And since I saw you last, I actually got to photograph a lovely big fossil spider. You know those nice creepy crawlies? Oh, nice creepy. I mean, we have some nice ones in Australia. The one reason why tourists get a little worried is they come to Australia and they see these big spiders crawling across the ceiling. And it is true, every now and then they'll fall down on you, okay? And they're as big as your dinner plate. But have a guess how big this one was. Tell me. It's that big. Wow. Now that's a spider. Aren't you happy to not be living there? Right. <laughs> so in reality, what we've seen in the rocks is a devolution, a degeneration, both from creation to the flood and from flood to the present, right? And it's still happening. Mr. John, would you give me a hammer, help me dig out the rock? Mm -hmm. Well, for those who would love to do that, do, do you offer any possibility of doing any research? Oh yes, research? yes we, we uh, take field trips regularly. I mean, I'll be going to Montana. Only for scientists? Or oh no, no, for every ordinary person, great. because you see, the first geologists were only theologians, oh, like you, great, right? Great, great. Uh, sorry about the word only, but they invented it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a down-to-earth mm. subject. You don't have to have a background. You have to have a set of eyes and a brain that God gave you. Mm -hmm. That should be a great time. Mm -hmm. But we do that all over the world and uh, I've just been out in England on the, the Welsh coast. One reason I've got a cough is because of the cold, windy Welsh weather, but finding heaps of fossils. And so yes, if they go to our website, which you can give them in a moment, mm -hmm. and just press field trips. Okay, great. You may be having your own questions. If you have questions, ask the right person. Okay www.creationresearch.net or info at creationresearch.net and ask for your free uh, every second week research, electronic yeah. uh, news uh, letter it's gonna come loaded with scientific data checked checked against the Bible with a short commentary from John heaps of good material I myself been on uh, short field trips with John it opened broadly, it broadened my perspective of God's greatness in creation, of God's justice and holiness in judgment, and of His love in redemption because I'm still here, still enjoying the love of Christ, still able to go and watch God's greatness, you know, taking a little hammer, being just, just an ordinary people like, like most of us. So if you would like to join John in, you organize this every year? Or so? Um, we have four or five a year. Oh, four or five a year. www.creationresearch.net This, just trust me, this is not for advertisement. I came to the Lord through John's ministry. I wanted to be good to commit suicide. I committed my life to Christ because of a geologist with a big heart for Jesus who went out digging out the evidence for creation, which for me, ultimately, in Christ became the evidence for my salvation. So, I encourage you to go on. This was our evolutionary dictatorship program. I hope you're going to have a blessed time of fellowship with the Lord Jesus and with one another. Thank you.